Hey gang, it's Editing Ronan here. I'm just popping in from the future to say that the audio quality on this one is a little bit sketchy. Uh, we parked in a very strange place and there were lots of cars and birds chirping. Next week I hope we'll be in a better location with more cover and less wind and things, but for now you're going to have to deal with it. And I think hopefully next week we'll sit still for more than two seconds because there's a lot of fidgeting in this one too. But apart from that, enjoy the episode. Good afternoon, hello, welcome back for another episode of Last Wizard, here's me, James. And I'm Ronan, but you said good afternoon, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's That's going to be true, afternoon. They might, they might not be listening in the you, afternoon. You're allowed to listen to this at any time of day, it doesn't have to be the afternoon. Ugh, sucks for them, because they don't get the authentic feel then. I know, that is, it's like how the, how the artist intended you to, <laughs> to insert this media is in the afternoon time, really late on a Sunday when you're really tired. <laughs> What is this podcast, James? That's the thing. I don't think our fans know about it. No, just, our fans. Our, fan, our one person. Oh, you don't even know there's one person. I don't Currently, even, there more. are zero people. <laughs> so for our fan... Our for, best, for the listener. For the listener. I like that. So much for, for the listener, we're just two nerds just reviewing some movies. You're a nerd, I'm not. <laughs> okay. That's one. the dynamic. Is I'm, a, I'm a cool jock and I beat you up. Cool jock. <laughs> and you sit there going, oh, I like Star Wars. <laughs> Go on, next thing. We'll explain to them how much you love Doctor Who. No, we don't talk about Doctor Who. It is actually a new episode of Doctor yeah, Who tonight. We're recording say. this on Sunday, new episode of Doctor Who tonight. I didn't know until yesterday, so I can't be that much of a nerd. God, so. you nerd. It's actually, um, they've got the Sea Devils, which uh, are a Doctor Who villain which we, ha- we haven't seen since the 70s. So it's actually very exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. And they look like they did in the 70s. Dude, dude, went... dude save it for next week's <laughs> podcast. Save it for next week's uh... podcast. <laughs> Bro, Doctor Who, right? <laughs> no, right? There's this episode of Doctor Who, the original episode with the Sea Devils. We're already, like, right in the beginning, we're already talking about Doctor Who. But there's this episode of the Sea Devils. It's a John Pertwee episode, and they filmed it in Portsmouth, which is where I went to university. And I watched it while I was at university, and I went to the locations they filmed it at, or the ones that I could, mm. because one of the ones they filmed it at was, like, a sea fort out in the ocean. Okay. But I went to the location, the beach they filmed it at, and there's... But it's so funny. The, at the end, the master gets... He, he escapes, because it's a master and Sea Devils episode and he escapes on a hovercraft and he just hovers off along the beach it's very funny it's, it's, I don't think it's meant to be funny I laughed it's so hard stu- it's so, it's so stupid 70s Doctor Who is the best it's, uh, it's one of John Pertwee's early episodes we like John Pertwee his son is Sean Pertwee is his son who is also an actor and they keep talking about bringing Sean Pertwee back to play the third Doctor in uh, like an, a, a 60th anniversary or whatever because he looks a lot like his dad. Oh, okay. uh, Sean Pertwee's in, I don't know if you've seen Dog Soldiers. No. no. He, he's, like, he, he's like a military exercise and they're in the Scottish Highlands and then they get attacked by werewolves. It's very silly. That sounds very silly. Um, but, still. but he does he does the, the narration on MasterChef and things like that. Sean Pertwee, he's, yeah. he's a big name, Sean Pertwee. I can't, there would be bigger things that he's yeah. in that you'll have seen. Okay, but. well, just uh, going to cut you, Sean, we'll go back on topic and tell so, them. Sorry, I've, I've <laughs> derailed you about Doctor Who. I got excited, do you notice? Know, I got excited then and I started stuttering. Because <laughs> 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 you don't Doctor Who. That was, that was my proper nerd coming say, out. I couldn't let you speak on for too much longer, though. <laughs> we'd just never finish the podcast. All right, no more Doctor Who. We'll tell them about it. So, we're gonna, as we said, we're going to review a movie. Last week, we did Sonic the Hedgehog. Week before, as you might know, we did Morbius. But we might not really... We're not <laughs> releasing those episodes, I don't think. Those are tester episodes. Tester. So, those might be released as bonus episodes later on for the most loyal of our customers. <laughs> for our loyal listeners. For the loyal listeners, you might get to listen to those <laughs> rambling out two hours worth of footage. What's uh, not, uh, footage w- audio, audio. Where we be- the first one, we don't say anything really. We just laugh for an hour. And the next one, we I think we did quite well last week. But this week should be even better. Where I, think I was going to say, I reckon we'd do good this week because we're going to cut out on some of the nonsense we we talked about it like in the first week, but we just spent a good The first five week, we just shouted about how much we hate Jared Leto, or how much well, I hate Jared Leto. How much Letter. you hate him. I, well, I don't I hate him. I don't well, actually, like him. I, I found a little bit of news for us to talk about. Oh, okay. And one of the news was it's 20 years since uh, American Psycho. So we could just talk about that scene where Christian right. Bale chops up Jared Leto if you he's wanted like, to talk about it. He's like 50 years old now, then, Jared Leto. He's too old. Too, he's too old, old to be acting. And too old to in, be talking to the film. too old to be talking to the women at the age that he talks to them at. Allegedly, don't <laughs> sue me, Jared Leto's <laughs> voice. I don't think Jared Leto's going to be listening to this. <laughs> Let's move off very quickly. Let's talk about the movie. Well, first we're going to talk about a bit of news, but I'd say the movie that we'll be talking about, which is The Lost City, with Sandy B or Sandra Bullock. 
And Channing Tatum. And Ch- Channing Tatum. And uh, we'll talk about that later on. But there uh, was some... with P- Daniel Radcliffe as well. Daniel Radcliffe is also, and there was a big star that we'll talk about later on that's not in it very long. But it's just it's very much like him to do it now that I realise. Yeah, the, I mean, the previous film from this director was Deadpool Two, in which this actor was in for half a second. Half a second. Not Literally even half on, a second. Just on screen. Like he gets electrocuted. He gets electrocuted. He's, he, he plays the Invisible Man in Van- Vanisher. Vanisher, uh, he's the same thing, right? <laughs> um, he plays Vanisher in Deadpool Two, and he gets lands on electric wires, and he gets electrocuted, and you yeah. see his face for half a half second. A second. Um, it's brilliant. But before we get to that, what do we have to do, James? So we're going to go through our movie news today. Our muse. Our muse. Yeah, that's very clever. Yeah, I thought that was very clever. Very good, actually. I've actually like the, the 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 notes app. I've named it Muse. I honestly thought when I read Muse on that, I thought you were talking about like the band Muse or like <laughs> or, or like a Muse, like a Muse, like I was Joss muse. Safdie's Muse on Uncle Jams. <laughs> Uncle Jams. I remember Uncle you sending me that. <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh my God. Do you want to read some news, or do you want me to read all of the news and you just... I'll read some of the news. Yeah, yeah we'll take it in turns. Uh, read the first two. First two, yep. So, I'm sure all of you know that the Fantastic Beast 3 is in the cinema. We haven't gone to review that. Because one, we don't want to watch that. Because one of us doesn't want to watch that. <laughs> you want to watch Fantastic Beast 3, actually. do you? Do you actually? I do. The Be- Crimes of Grimdall. Oh, that was the last oh, one. I've already watched... That was last. This was this one called Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah, last. That's even, an even worse title. <laughs> well, I've watched the other two now. It's kind of nice to finish off the trilogy. But with our news for this one is Fantastic Beast Three makes lowest opening weekend of any film in the Harry Potter franchise. Which is good news. Which is good news because it means they're less likely to make another one. <laughs> Which is brilliant because overall we're not a big fan of J.K. Rowling. You don't mind the films. I don't. Like I like. Yeah, I like the films. You don't like the films. The films are fine. I, I'm not a big fan of J.K. Yeah. Rowling. I think I mean, she's a transfer. She's we should a, yes. probably avoid talking about that because it's a very uncomfortable topic. There's no people out there. Yeah, she's a transfer. Well, I I, just, I like the films. He doesn't. I haven't liked any of the Fantastic Beasts films. We haven't done a review for it, but we. We'll, I'm, I'm I'll not probably, watching it. You're I'll, gonna watch it, honestly. I'll probably watch it. And I can give on, on another episode. I'll give my talk about it and what it was like. When are you gonna watch Fantastic Beasts three? Well, I'll probably just. Why, why would you go ever to want to? Yeah, You'll be out of cinema soon. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have to seek out Fantastic Beasts three and go. This is a film I want to watch. The third prequel to Harry Potter. I think it's because I watched the first two now, and I'm just like, I've got to complete it. Maybe it's my OCD just been like, you got to see it now. You're, you're a completionist. Completionist. Which I, is quite surprising, seeing as I don't think I've ever completed a theme. Either. You know in Harry Potter, I mean, these, these prequels are the battle between uh, Grindelwald and Dumbledore, which yeah. happened during the Second World War. Before, oh right, yeah. During the Second World War, because it, because later on, aren't the, don't the wizard, the, the wizards make sure the Holocaust happens? Isn't that something that happens in Harry Potter? Because I, I remember that being weird that the wizard purposely made made sure that the Holocaust happened, and I think the battle between Grindelwald and I sound like such a nerd for someone that doesn't know Harry for Potter that much. I was gonna say. I don't even know this. Again, I've not I've not read the books. I've just watched the films. I, I have read the books, and they do talk about this. But the battle happens, like, 1945, at the end of World War Two. Yeah. But these films are, like, set in the 1930s. So I think there's, like, 15, 20 years between the current Fantastic Beasts film and the end of the Fantastic Beasts franchise. Right? <laughs> But and I have no clue again. Uh, just... The previous ones they're set in the nineteen twenties, though, right? I honestly can't remember the most. The most I know about Fantastic Beasts right now. Are there are big animals in it. There are big animals. I'd like Eddie Redmayne. He he was really good as Stephen Hawkins. But in addition, Warner Bros. edited out references to gay relationships between Dumbledore and Grindelwald. <laughs> Which is like again, Fantastic Beasts. A really, it's a really uncomfortable topic. But basically, I know I've read a little bit about this story. Mm. It was two lines in the film in the first place, which I think says a lot about representation. That if it's two lines in the film, they were ready to cut it out for their mm. Chinese release. Because I think the Chinese government said, we will not release this unless you cut out these references. They'd have to... They'd have to also... Because in the second one as well, they made releases to that. Yeah. Is it, But they only edit it in the third one, because there is just a, a bit of a, a well, nod think, towards it. I think in the previous ones... It hasn't been specifically about the gay relationship between Grindelwald and Dumbledore. Oh, but so they they've do. been cutting little bits out. But I think this has made some waves because mm. it's such a it's mm, a big such deal. A big and what annoys me about this, right, is because people are talking about it. 
Because it's a, I think it's a political statement, right? I mean, we've gone from movie news to politics. Politics. But I think it's a political statement to cut this out. And it would I don't think it would be as much of a political statement to release the movie the way the director intended, right? Because if you release the movie the way the director intended, you say, this is the movie we made, and we're not going to alter it for any political reason. I don't think that's a political statement. But in order to alter it, it's a political statement that says... It didn't matter in the first place, and we're quite happy to sell these people down the river. We're back onto our the movie news. Yeah, we'll move again. away from that because it is a difficult topic. This is why I don't want to talk about Harry Potter <laughs> because I find everything surrounding it to be a really <laughs> difficult topic to talk Anything about. Anything related to it. It's just so uncomfortable to talk about these we'll, things. We'll, we'll bang on the next news. So we're gonna we're gonna move on to something that's so light it's barely worth talking about. But St- Star Wars Visions season two is released later this year. Which one's Star Wars Visions? So it's like a, it's like an anthology series of different animation styles of different things that happen in Star Wars. So there's like an anime one. Oh, okay. It, it, the last series is really cool. They're like 20 minute, and there's like six of them. They're like 20 minute anime okay. shorts. I never actually watched that. I should put that on the list of things to watch. It's not really Star Wars. It just looks like Star Wars, if you know what I mean. Do you have any characters? Though? I mean, some of them, yeah, but not a lot. It's, I, I think it's really I think it's the kind of interesting thing that they should be doing with Star Wars but um, yeah I thought that was it's, oh, it does sound quite I good thought that was though. a really light topic to yeah, come, to make up for the one we had before so the next one is even lighter and it's the Florida man <laughs> and, and spider-man which I showed you just before yeah, we just started before. I love this so there's a Florida man that's uh, made the world record for seeing Spider-Man No Way Home the n- most number of times in theatres at 292 times in total and I have the running time for it here the running time is um, 720 hours or 30 days total Jeez. he's watched a par- uh, that's, Spider-Man that's insane there are 365 days in the year so for a yeah but it was only released four months ago Oh my. It was released in December. So it's not even been out a year, so that means he must have gone multiple times in a day. Roughly, he's going... I think he's going... I mean, that's, that's quick maths, and I don't really want to do the quick maths. But I think he's going about four times a day. That's that's insane. I mean, I love the film. The film is terrific. But it's not... It's not... It, it's not. I've, I've also done a little bit of maths. Assuming that cinema tickets in Florida are about $10, mm. he spent $3,000. I don't think it's $3,000 It's not $3,000 good. $3, good. Another one that's going to be difficult to talk about is Barry Cogan. I don't know how to say this guy's name. I don't even know who he is. He's the guy that played the Joker in the Batman. Um, he's in a handful of it. He was in the Eternals. He was in. He's in a really great film called Calm with Horses, which is really nice. He's played the Joker in the Batman. You know the oh the ending. Oh. But the story is that he got arrested for being publicly intoxicated in Dublin. No. <laughs> and why that's funny is. To be arrested for being t- publicly intoxicated in Dublin, you have to be. You have to be so drunk. You have to be really drunk. It's also like not playing on Irish stereotypes now. Like people were acting like this was a big story, but like that's a relatively that's, normal thing to happen, right? That's a relatively small one in the grand scheme. So another news that is uh, quite interesting to hear is that Disney will submit Loki for the outstanding drama at the Emmys and there's Moon Knight, Moon Knight and, Hawk. and Hawkeye, Hawkeye doing for something and they'll be submitted to the limited series category that's quite impressive to be fair I don't know that they'll do very well I mean well, Loki is, Loki was amazing Loki's an impressive show but Hawkeye Hawkeye was good but it wasn't as good as Loki I, I Loki don't think was, it's going to win an Emmy Lo, Loki is like, uh, well Loki's something you've never seen before Loki was but something like Hawkeye I think it's just because it's Tom Hiddleston he's really good in whatever he does yeah, I think he is excellent and Moon Knight is good as well Mo- it, Moon Knight hasn't finished so I don't know how how you can they obviously they obviously think it ends well otherwise they wouldn't be doing that. I'm preferring Moon Knight to Hawkeye I mean it's strong have you watched the, have you watched the most recent I'm, one watched the most recent one episode 3 where he punches someone and he's like yeah and the guy licks the knife when we were talking we talked before about the CGI when they're on the road yes the, I thought exactly the same thing when they were fighting on the roof did you think it's that it's not the strongest CGI well the thing is I was I was reading a bit about it and they done a lot of filming on location so when they're in the desert and things they're on location but I think it's very very clear when they're not on location and I don't understand why really no that's the, that's the thing if you have seen episode one you'll see them driving 
Well, and you can understand why that wasn't done on location. Yeah, well, it was, but it's just the CGI. People were talking about the CGI is good, but it's... Well, that's what I've heard as well as not, people praising it for that. It's not very strong. I think it's been a I've bit seen, sketchy in some places. It's been better. So moving on to our next topic of news. This one's a bit more melancholic. It might... It's a little bit sad when I think about it. Why? But it's when Scrap finally got the acorn because... <laughs> I, I, I forgot I wrote that down. But the thing is, I watched the animation of Scrap getting the it's nice, acorn. It? It's nice in that he finally gets it, he eats it, he has a good time. But it it's because looking... Blue Sky Studios is closing down because Disney bought them out. Yeah. Which is very sad when you think about it because they were like an independent animation studio. And now Disney, big, big... You know, well, I didn't understand. Didn't Disney own who owns Ice Age before? Wasn't isn't that a Disney? I thought that was DreamWorks, Fruit. and then they outsourced it to Blue Sky. So what's the point of them buying Blue Sky if they already I'm own? I'm not sure. But I didn't get it. Really. It's kind of sad. That's why I find it sad that they have to make this because it seems like they're not yeah. going to be making another Ice Age when Ice Age itself. Was I think they're doing a series. It's just not quite the same. The series. Yeah, they are doing those adventures of both. Yeah. Which, Which is, is Simon Pegg? I love Simon Pegg. Is that Simon Pegg's it is, character, It is right? Simon Pegg's character, yes. How do we know so much about I know. Ice Age? I love Simon Pegg. Ice See, I don't, I don't mind being embarrassed about the other things we know a lot about. I'm a little bit embarrassed about knowing so much about Ice Age. <laughs> I've, got, I've got two more stories on here, and then I've got one up here that well, I want to say. Go on, lay it on me. Let's, let's hear uh, the news. Nicolas Cage says, I would love to be in a Muppet movie. I think Kermin and I could be best friends, and I've always had a crush on Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> what that story says to me is that Nicholas Cage wants to cuck Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> he wants Kermit to sit in the corner rubbing that cucumber, and he wants Kermit to watch. Oh, oh like, you know, he just really likes to eat pork. <laughs> uh, and the final story I've got written down is there was a trailer for Heartstopper on Netflix. I don't know if you know what that is. I actually don't, please. Uh, when we were in the... Uh, we're not nerds, but when we were in the mm. comic book store a couple of weeks ago, uh, I showed you this. It was like a black and white big book, and they, were, they had volumes two, three, and four in there. Uh, I just read, I just read volume one at home. It's genuinely such a beautiful comic. Barely anything happens mm. in it. It's just like some teenage boy that falls oh, in love with a, a is, boy that's is, on the rugby team. I was gonna say, is it the the, the male romance one? Yeah. Yes. Um, beautiful art. Beautiful it art. Genu- it. It's like really simplistic. I really liked it when I read it. But they're doing a show on. Oh, that's nice. Doing, Live yeah. action? Yeah. Oh. It doesn't look as good. I don't know. It's only a trailer. Well, like, I reckon but, I'll have that. Oh, I'll have, probably have a more feel to it. I'm trying to. Because not everyone likes animated stuff, so they might not go for it. I, I, I really like the book, and I just wanted to bring that up, because I thought say, people should either read that or watch that when it comes out on Netflix. Talking about animated shows on Netflix, one of my favourite ones that... You ever seen Love, Death and Robot? Yes. I absolutely That's loved it. That's such a good it. show. The one, the one with the giants on the beach. Oh. I, I think about that quite often, and I don't know why. It's, it's a very... Uh, it's very also very maniconic when you think about it, because it's like a big, big tourist attraction... But then just uh, people forget about people it, forget about and then like the, he's driving through the countryside at the end, and people have forgotten. Like there's bones above bars, and there's like skulls in field, but people, it's like a never happened. It's like never happened. People totally forgot. One of the, my one of my favorite ones was was the one where they're trapped in space, and it's a so the guy wakes up from a, a deep sleep slumber. The Michael B. Jordan does, isn't there one with Michael B. Jordan that wakes up? No, this or is are different. you thinking the one? Not this to spoil it, or, not to spoil it or anything, but isn't the is it the one the guy ends up as a spider? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what we've described is the weirdest show you've <laughs> ever heard of. A guy wakes up in space and it turns out he's a spider. It's so that's so... the end of the news I got written down, James. But I had another bit in here yeah. uh, in the old noggin. In the old noggin, um, which I read. Uh, I read a story. So every year, well, I say every year. This is only the second year they've done it. Uh, in June. DC do their Pride release, which is uh, uh, an annual special which collects short stories from all of their LGBT characters. Mm. And they're doing a special for... The reason I'm excited for this year is because they're doing a special for Tim Drake. The story was originally released in Batman Urban Legends as like a three-story a three story arc. Urban Legends was a, an anthology series, so there were lots and lots of different stories in this one yeah. thing and then they collected it in a volume but the story the tim drake story wasn't wasn't collected in the volume so i never got to read it and i'm a little bit excited because i get to read it now when i didn't get to read it before and it came out like six months ago so oh, nice uh which is quite nice um but the story is that for that pride special kevin conroy is writing oh. uh writing a short story and the reason i bring it up is because the article I read described Kevin Conroy as the first openly gay superhero. And I didn't know Kevin Conroy was. 
You were, and I wanted to ask you if you knew that Kevin Conroy was. I didn't know he was openly gay, but there were hints and people were talking about it as well, so maybe that's how we knew. When he must, when he, but they were talking about it like he was always he, been an openly gay superhero, but he started Batman he started, 30 years ago. If you guys didn't know, he voiced the Batman in Batman the Animated Series, probably one of the and greatest. And the Arkham games, yeah. and so much stuff going he's, forward. He's got the voice for it. He's, uh, he's the, kind of the go-to he's Batman the voice go-to now. Batman. But I didn't know that about him, and I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, to be fair. So we'll move on to our next topic, which is the the main reason people come for the review, which is the lost city. For the main city. reason people come, you're assuming people are coming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping they come in. <laughs> you're assuming there's anyone listening to this, <laughs> apart from me when I edit. <laughs> I am the one listener. When we say the listener, we refer to me yeah, in a couple of hours' time. <laughs> yeah, to our one listener, I bet, Ronan. <laughs> Hi, future Ronan. You're doing okay, You're doing man. good, man. Things have been difficult recently, but, you know... It gets easier. There's only one thing where you can go from, and that is up. There is still rock bottom yet to hit. Well, we're not on rock bottom yet. Future Ronan, you're a scumbag and I hate <laughs> you. Let's move on to the movie. We might leave some of that in, I hope we do. I hope we do. The movie we're going to be reviewing is The Lost City with Sandra B. Bullock. Daniel Radcliffe. Sandra B. Bullock. Sandra B. Bullock. Oh, what does that B in the middle stand for? Bodacious. <laughs> Sandra Bodacious. Um... Uh, Daniel D. Radcliffe. <laughs> What does that D stand for? Daniel Danger Radcliffe. Danger's my middle <laughs> name. And Bradley... Channing Tatum first. Channing C... Chan- Tatum. No, Channing G Tatum. Channing G Tatum. And the G stands for... Guy. Gambit. Channing G... <laughs> Gambit. Gambit because he changed his name because the movie's never going to get made. That's the closest he'll get to it. Oh, no, no, I've got another one. Channing G Tatum. Channing Gammon Tatum. <laughs> Channing Tatum's not Gammon. <laughs> Sometimes he gets really red. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little. In this movie, there are parts where his back gets red. I'll, get I'll allow that. Okay. Allow. And then Bradley C. Pitt. What's the C? Don't say. Don't say the word I'm thinking right now. <laughs> Cooper. Co- okay, Bradley Cooper Pitt. <laughs> Bradley Cooper. It's hyphenated. <laughs> his mum's Cooper. His dad's Pitt. So he's Bradley Cooper Pitt. I was going to say, but Bradley Cooper's an actual person. Yeah, I know. It's funny. Let's just leave it. <laughs> so with that, just... so you're gonna. Uh, w- you're gonna rate this, James. Yeah, overall, you got your own rating. I rate it a. There's, there's parts of it. I liked it, but it's like, is it something where people gonna look back and be, this is hands down my favourite? Is it. This could be someone's favourite. It could be, but is it. The direction's good, the lighting's good, the sets are clean, I would say. I think, I think it looked genuinely good. Lo- it looked good. Everything, the whole set, the, the whole mise en scene. Was good. Get you. Yeah, no big Get you, mise en scène. Actors were phenomenal. I really liked them all. They, I mean, that just proves they can act. I mean, they were they were really good. They actors. They're all very think. famous actors. They're all famous. I actors. don't think they needed to prove anything in the Lost City. No, but they were terrific at what they did. Daniel Radcliffe plays uh, the bad guy, but it's really hard to take. You've him gone as into the, bad the review, guy. James. I'm gonna I'm gonna rail you back in. And and that's what I'm doing. You you were about to do a rating. Oh yeah, the rating. <laughs> you, I'm, my I'm, re- I'm reeling you back in. My numbers rating. I would give it. I would. I'd probably give it a seven again. Out of seven. A seven out of. Seven out of seven. Seven. <laughs> seven out of seven eleven. Seven out of eleven. Seven out of eleven. Good. Seven eleven. Seven eleven. No, it's it's eleven because it's 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 higher than ten. Why well, wouldn't this... you just make ten bigger? <laughs> this isn't That's Spinal Tap. I knew you'd get that. I love that. <laughs> it's right. that smi- I absolutely <laughs> love Spinal Tap. Like, but, but this but goes to eleven. Why don't you just make ten louder but, and have but, that be the biggest? But, but this one goes to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> right, we shouldn't just reference movies that not everyone's seen. But overall, yeah, I'll give it a seven out of eleven. We're keeping it in. Anyway. And my review for these podcasts are going to be: Would you go out in a global pandemic to watch this at the cinema? And I would. I'd go out. I'd go out to global pan- in a global pandemic to watch this in the cinema, James. Would you? I would. We did. Yes, we did. We did, and we would. Because we do it for the fan. Yeah, we do this for you, listener. We, we, we know we who that listener we, is. Me later on. <laughs> we definitely wouldn't do this if there weren't people listening, mm. because we haven't been doing this for <laughs> for the last five years or however long we've known each other. Would I? Pay, would I pay to watch it well, again? Well, you didn't pay to watch it today. I paid to watch it today. <laughs> well, yes. But would I go pay to watch it again? No. But would I watch it on if it was on That's Netflix? That's not true. Yeah. If, if your date said, I want to go and see that new Sandra Bullock film, I think you'd go and watch this again. Well, I, luckily I don't date. I'm a hermit. Yeah, he doesn't leave his house. I don't leave my house. 
unlike me. Who <laughs> <laughs> mm. What happened in this movie with Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, Daniel Radcliffe? I was about to say Bradley Pitt again. Bradley Cooper Pitt. Bradley Cooper Pitt. Uh, you're going to tell us what happened in the film. So yes. So it all starts. We'll set the scene. Intro. Exterior. <laughs> you're going to do inside the temple. There's snakes on the floor. There's a bad guy holding a torch. We don't need to do that. That spoils the film. Basically, just go from. Yeah. So essentially, what happens with this one? Sandra Bullock, a reclusive writer who writes love romantic, sorry, rom- romance novels. She's a pulpy romance mm. novels because they're not supposed to be very good ones. No, they're not. It's set in the set in their series. They're like romancing, um, uh, romancing the stone type. Novels, yes, I think. Exactly. They're like adventure novels adventure for, uh, where they, horny for, women. for horny middle-aged women, yeah. women. With this one, she then she's at a press conference where, lo and behold, we do meet the secondary character. His name? Is Channing Tatum. Channing G. Gammon Tatum. His, his character doesn't have a name. His name is Channing Tatum. His, his name is Alan. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Alan. Okay. Just... <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, James, I'm not going to argue with you. So he plays a character... He plays a love interest of... Of Channing... Well, not really. He, um... Yeah, he is a love interest. In, in, the, oh, no. in the novel. No, no, she's... She's his love interest, anyway. Yeah. He, he loves her. She doesn't love him yet. But spoilers, she falls in love with him. We should say that spoilers to the end. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she falls in love with him. He's in love with her, but she's not reciprocating it at the moment. I'm going to skip on a few bits. Where she gets kidnapped by... Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Harry Potter. Harry Potter, indeed. The guy. Again, can you name the character? I honestly can't. That's the same thing. This is my review. That this was the point I was going to make about the movie is the char- there are no characters in this movie. We are watching Sandra mm. Bullock. We're watching Channing Tatum. We're watching Brad Harry Pitt. Potter. Harry Potter. And we're watching Brad Pitt. The, the, no point did I think these are. This is a good point we should make about the film. I should have put this in my review that. There isn't that much character development. You literally are paying just to watch. It's funny. It's funny. There's a little bit of action. It's not great action, but it works. And I think it's it's a relatively good. Yes. I th- I think the uh, not to go too deep into spoilers. We haven't finished the story yet. No, we'll go back to um, that. But not to go too deep into spoilers. I think the reveal at the end about the the tomb. I think that works really well. It's a good metaphor. As as. Like a romance novel that feels like the end mm. of a romance no, novel. No, it, it would be. Because <laughs> in the story, Dan Redcliffe's character talks about, I paid all this money for a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, we'll, we'll get to that at the end. We sh- you should continue but, with the story now. I'll talk about But yeah, the, because you're essentially just paying just to see was, Bradley I paid, Cooper. You didn't pay. Oh, sorry, yeah, you paid just to see Bradley Cooper, yes. Pitt, Channing Gammon Tatum, <laughs> S- <laughs> Sandra Budacious <laughs> Bullock, Daniel Radcliffe. No, there was something that Daniel... Oh, Daniel Danger Radcliffe. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you are essentially just paying to watch I did, them. I didn't think I was watching any particular characters. No, there, there isn't that good of... But they're having a lot of, of fun with... Yeah, they the are movie. having fun. A good hallmark of a good movie is that they are having fun. They are not... Uh, there's not much character development. So where did you get in the story? So with this one, Daniel Radcliffe kidnap Sandra Bullock because she and her husband used to be architects. Archaeologist. Archaeologist. I say architect. You said architect. Arche- I mean, uh, archaeologist. Power through. <laughs> Power through, indeed. That he's in. She is an archaeologist with her husband. She's able to translate the Latin. From... No, no, it was a different language. It was on Latin. Yeah, it's like a dead language. It's like a dead language. Yeah. Okay, that, that that makes more sense. It, uh, for a, for a bit, I thought it was Latin, and no, I it wasn't thought Latin. she's not the only person that can speak <laughs> Latin. Why have you stolen this novel writer? <laughs> exactly, and because she's the only one who can speak the language, essentially. He kidnaps her. Or I think she's not the only one that can speak it, but he read her book, and in the oh, book, book she can speak she, it. Yeah, so he's she, the only one that she he knows. He knows who can speak it, which is quite surprising. He has all that money. You, you would have thought he would have just been able to Google. Yeah, but also he's looking for more money because he's been cut off yeah. because his brother was given that. Daniel Radcliffe's motive for the story. That's his it, motivation. Is, is that he's that. a spoiled rich kid whose brother was gifted the family company. Yes. So yeah, in essentially, Daniel Radcliffe has a brother, and the well, father we gives that. him. These are yeah, all no, great. but you were. Daniel Radcliffe's father gives him, gives the little brother the money and the keys to the throne, should we say? And then this is his motive. He wants something nobody else has gotten, which is the fire crown. Which is described as the crown that the wife of, uh, like, leader of this island 
buried his wife with. Yes. But we'll get to the reveal at the end. Continue with the story, James. <laughs> I didn't even know which yeah. I got to. <laughs> um, Sandra Bullock had just been kidnapped and Daniel Radcliffe had taken her oh, to yes. the island. The island. It's a good movie. <laughs> It's not really, is it? Think about the island for a second. It's not a good movie. I actually quite like it. We've taken up so long on this. It's on in... this story bit. I know. <laughs> and um, he gets to he takes her to an island. This is where Channing Gammon Tatum comes in. Well, Channing Tatum, he gets Bradley Pitt's. Uh... Yeah, we'll get to that. But you, again, Brad Bradley Pitt's character, you you can ignore him. He doesn't add any relevance to the. He's, very, he's very funny. He's, he's very charismatic fun, but... and very fun. But you could you could kill Bradley Pitt. Oh wait, they did kill Spoilers. Bradley Pitt, and he makes no difference to the story. You come out, it's uh, he gets to the island with Bradley Pitt, Bradley Cooper Pitt, <laughs> Bradley Pitt. We need to drop this joke. <laughs> this joke. It takes too long. It we does. need to drop this Bradley Cooper Pitt joke <laughs> because it's an extra name to edit out at the end if I have to. It is just Brad. Brad. We're gonna call him Brad. I, I like Bradley Pitt. I think Bradley that's a funny Pitt. joke. So Bradley Pitt gets killed. We should say then... He gets shot in the face. He does get shot in the face. Basically, the next hour of the movie, you could just skip over until they get to the tomb, I'd say. Yeah. Do you not agree? No, yeah, yeah. You well, can... you should say the publisher, or... or, or... Oh, he, she, she's no relevance to the story Have as you well. seen her perform? No. Um, she's in High Fidelity, the series with... Zoe Kravitz and she plays one of the people that works with Zoe Kravitz nah. in that. She's a lot of fun in that and she's a lot of fun in this N- too. Never watch her. She's a good character. She's a good actress. But she also has no relevance to the story. Not really. Essentially, all the characters I'm just Apart to... from the t- three main ones. This this is pretty much none of the characters need to do anything because when you think about it nothing progresses. I mean, Ch- Channing Tatum needs to do something. He needs to save Sandra Bullock. No, I mean, if they didn't, if she didn't go to the island, well, she uh, she didn't really have much of a choice. Well, even if they did, and the island explodes, they get to the tunnel, all of that. They discover it's the oh, yeah, crown. She just, if she just helped Harry Potter, yeah, they'd have ended up in the same place. They would have ended up in the exact same place. The island then gets caught on fire by a volcano, by the way, and they get rescued. Essentially, the whole pre- it's it's kind of reminds me of. Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. That, that's the very famous story about Indiana Jones. That he Temple of Doom is the only one where it makes a difference that he's there. The rest of them, it would all end the same way. It, it literally does end the same way, like this. Their their impact on the story at the end, where the whole volcano erupts and takes the tomb with them. They don't. They don't need to be there. It just happens. But essentially, what the prize possession is is a fire crown, which is a metaphor for love. Because everyone thinks that the crown is pure diamond. She was buried with, uh, she was buried with this treasure, and it turns out the treasure was her husband's. Exactly. Is it's the a, metaphor. Essentially, that the treasure is love. Which is, I have not read a lot of romance novels, but that's how all of but the ones I have read. But that is also ends. in Indiana Jones in the Temple of the Crystal Skull, where they talk about treasure and people think it's money, but treasure for the aliens is knowledge. Yeah, kind of. All right, I, I get your Indiana Jones comparison. I like it. Yeah. Alright, uh, what else do you want to say about this movie? Uh, but even though we dissed on it about there is no relevance to them being there, it's just a pretty strong movie. It's just funny. You, 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 if you love the actors, you would like this. One thing I do want to talk about uh, as well. You want to talk about money? That's oh, right. I do want to talk about the He's, money. James is our money man. He's mm. a finance bro. He, do, he t- doesn't stop talking about crypto and <laughs> NFTs and things. But every week we get him to talk about some money. Never shut up about it. I hate <laughs> that, James Kidd. <laughs> now, so with The Lost City, it grossed, apparently domestically, 74 million. What's that, uh, worldwide? Worldwide, 83 million. I mean, we're, we're kind of midday Sunday. They've yeah. not opened the American market yet. This is only up until now. This has been out two days for us. So just imagine a week. If it's grossed that much in a week. I, think, it's, I, think, it's, I think it'll do quite well. well not- I reckon it'll do quite well. But it won't be one of those... I can't imagine it getting a sequel though because of how they left it, but they also could. They've opened it because the old premise of her going to the island and the adventure was her getting kidnapped. You can't exactly have her getting kidnapped again, yeah. but you could. Well, like when I when they entered into the room, do you know what I got vibes of? Have you ever seen Journey to the Center of the Earth with Josh Hutchinson and Bra- Brendan Fraser? Brendan Fraser, yeah. Were you thinking of the one with the rock? I was thinking of one from the 1950s, but no. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm... James is a James is a finance bro. I'm I'm the awful film per... film student that everyone hates. I do hate you. Everyone <laughs> talks about oh, movies are so much better back then. 
I want you to go on your phone and I want you to have a look at budgets. budgets. I'm interested to see how much this cost. I would be quite interested. I can imagine... It, around 100 mil would be my guess. Oh, I can imagine it would be quite less than that. I reckon quite a lot of it was filmed... Oh, a lot I mean, of it's in a studio. A lot of it was in a studio. I can't imagine... But it doesn't look like it was in a studio, like... But even if it was Moon filmed... Nights. Yeah, but even if it was filmed on, on, a, on set or... Location. In, in location. Because of what they're doing, it doesn't look like it would cost that much. Well, they are walking through a swamp at one point. Yeah, I reckon there are that a couple was filmed of that could be location. location. So I'll have a look into how much it cost. Do you want me to have a look at filming locations? Yes, I would like to discuss that as well, to be fair. We should do this more. So, as you said, you were guessing it was about 100 million for the Lost City budget. I'll tell you how much it was. It was between 68 million and 74 million. I'm not that far off. You're not that far, then. far off, to be fair. That is, that is quite a close. And the box office, as we said, 83 million. It's already got its money back. Well, the not all... including advertising. Uh, there, it's always double budget, it. Yeah, the advertising. You kind of loosely uh, double. You do double it. And I've not seen a million. lot of marketing for this, so maybe it's not going to cost that much. I reckon they based I've not it, seen it on, on the side of power. Buses. I reckon they solely relied on star power. I've not seen that many trailers for it. I've not yeah. seen it on the side of buses. Or... That's the thing that's what I'm thinking. It's they, based on star power. I, I think easily enough it's cost much less than that. Mm, 100%. Um, I was about to look for the filming locations, but I got sidetracked with the trivia because there are a couple of things here that I think you will find very interesting. Okay. So we're going to go from our finance bro James to I want to talk about the movie trivia because I found some stuff on the IMDb. Uh, the top thing says, uh, spoiler warning, so spoilers for Bullet Train which I know you're excited for, but after making a cameo in Brad Pitt's movie Bullet Train 2022, Sandra Bullock befriended Pitt and saw an opportunity for a fun casting which led to Pitt accepting the cameo in this movie. So Bullet Train was filmed before this, but it's being released a few months after, which I thought was interesting. Do you know what, do you know what that tells me? Is that they essentially planned the movie, recorded with Channing Tatum, essentially did a lot of those scenes first, and then was like, oh, we have a space we can fit Brad Pitt into. No, I imagine it would have been before filming on this Before filming. Set. And that maybe he wasn't in the original script. Makes sense about the long hair yeah. 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 And the next bit is, Ryan Reynolds was originally sought after for the male lead, so that would have been the Channing Tatum role, played by Ryan Reynolds. Would have liked to have it. would have been a very different film, It would I have think. been... It would have been extremely different. And they say it would have been a reunion from The Proposal, 2009. I do like The re the Proposal, too. Have you watched that? I have, yeah. It's kind of a romantic slapstick comedy. It's I don't think nice. Ryan Reynolds would have been... I think Channing Tatum was the perfect choice I think for Channing Tatum. No, I agree. Ryan Reynolds now is more, I'd say, action-oriented. He still has comedic chops, but when I was watching Red Notice and Adam Project... This is very similar very... to Red Notice. It is, essentially, yeah. It's, it's very much... Very much a com comedic film, but I think Channing Tatum plays. This I think Channing Tatum is perfect for this. It's because you always see Channing Tatum as the sexy dumb guy, which he plays really well in this. Who he is? He's the sexy dumb guy. One one bit of trivia here is the premise of the film is very similar to *Romancing the Stone*. It's not really trivia, is it? That's just it's a, a bit, it's criticism. Just... Filmed in the Dominican Republic. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I will go back to what I was looking for. So we will. We. I got sidetracked then, but we will move on to. Filming locations. Uh, there were quite a bit of it. There was quite a bit of it that was filmed on a soundstage, but also Samana, Dominican Republic, which would have been most of the jungle stuff. Mm. The town they go to halfway through, and when they're walking through the swamps. Yeah, I, that would have been. The that's movie. better than going to the Amazon or whatever, isn't 100%. it? Hundred percent. Which is quite interesting when you think about it, because take the filming there, because it doesn't look like they'd have to pay a lot to film in that in those places. I reckon they do. I don't know, who are you paying? The, the actual, local government. The, the local government to, to have permission to film. But you don't necessarily have to pay them. There are also the scenes where it's obvious that it's CGI. You know when they're on top of the mountains? There's some scenes where it's obvious that it's filmed in a studio. But it's the last thing. I can't imagine it costs too much. I think the temple at the end was a studio. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Because they've got a pool and they've got to do lots of stuff with that pool. They've also got to destroy the whole thing. Yeah. There's no way they're going to an actual temple. Yeah, but they could have built a fake temple on location as well. It would have been I mean. easier in a studio. It's, oh, I, think it's, I think it's a lot easier to do that in the studio. Um, is that all we wanted to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a good episode. I think we got a few things. What are said. we watching next week, James? Next, that's a good question. There are a few things we have to watch. There is The Northman, which looks quite good. 
Now there's a few things we have to we watch. We have to watch. We them. have to watch. You're going to tie me down and watch Northman next week. <laughs> or but that's not the case, is it? Because we have. There are a few things we kind of want to watch for next week. There's the Northman, or what we've been really excited for is. It's called the unbearable weight of massive talent, which is the Nicholas Cage Nicolas plays Nicholas Cage. And who's playing Nicholas Cage? Nicholas Cage is playing Nicholas Cage. Well, Nick, Nick Cage, Cage play Nicholas Cage plays Nick Cage. The character Nick Cage. Which is based on Nicolas Cage. I Honestly, I've seen so many trailers for this. This is the, the one film this year that I really want to see. This might even push Nicolas Cage to be an A-star actor again, or an A-star celebrity. Do you reckon? He I was. think this is Nicolas Cage just taking the mick out of himself, <laughs> if anything. Do you know, he, so at one point he was an A-list celebrity. So this is. I think he still is. He's not. He's a household name. Everyone knows who Nicolas Cage is. He's not an A-star celebrity. If you though. saw Nicolas Cage walking down the street, you go, "Oh my God, that's the A-star Nicolas Cage." The. Yeah, but that could be like do you, Donald Trump. If I see him walking down, the street, Donald, Donald Trump. Trump is one of the most famous people in but the world. I wouldn't call him an A-list. Somebody loved by people. There are a lot of people. Be, I know a lot of Donald people. There Trump. is a cult behind him. I don't a, take a that. Very back. specific there type is, of there, person. A very Donald specific Trump. type of people. But I think... He's literally got a cult. I think Nicholas Cage... I, I, I've got a couple of Nicholas Cage stories, if you want some Nicholas Cage stories. We'll save that for the next one. Ooh, a little bit of sizzle yeah, for next of, week. No, but absolutely. <laughs> but this might shoot him back into the good graces and the highlights because he did a lot of films. So my last favourite film of his, I know people didn't like it, but National Treasure, I quite enjoyed it. I really did enjoy National Treasure. He's done some great Treasure. stuff that you might not have Mandy seen Mandy was good. Mandy's fantastic. Mandy's Pig good. is supposed to be excellent. I've not seen those, Pig those, yet. Are, those are more B-list films. Those, well, they're, they're kind of B-movies. Don't, I, we don't really use the phrase B-movies anymore. They're lower budget. Lower budget films. Horror, uh, they're not necessarily thrillers. horrors. Thrillers. Uh, that I think he I think he really likes doing that kind of film. Well, apparently I heard is that he was at broke and he had to take a lot of these films to pay off the debt. That's the rumour. Um, I watched an interview with him. I mean, we should save this for next week. Mm. But I watched an interview with him where he was talking about the dinosaur skull. Do you know the story of the dinosaur skull? He bought skull? a dinosaur skull. But it was... It was illegally stolen from the country and he had to give it back to the country but he didn't get any of his money back oh. and he, he he skirted around how much he paid for it but it's reported that he paid about 150 million 150 million yeah and he bought those two albino snakes he did which were very expensive and he has castles all around and that's my Nicholas Cage story as a castle near Wells in Somerset and apparently on New Year's Eve last year or the year before or the year before that he was in a pub buying everyone drinks in Wells. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Seems it is. I do want to see him. I heard about it the next time. I thought, I wish I was in Wells last night. <laughs> no, I do want to see him in The Good Graces and having some more action films. Like I, I want them to make a National Treasures 3. National Treasures 2 was, is all right. I think we should save our Nicolas Cage talk for mm. next week when we do review the unbearable weight of incredible... or oh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. It's such a silly title. It's such a silly title. But yeah, next week we'll be watching the unbearable weight of massive talent. So that is that is us for today. That's the show for today. A lot of editing for me, I think. But... <laughs> Absolutely. Two, it says two nerds in a car. No, that's it's not. No, I'm saying there's just two nerds in Oh, yeah, that's us. But that's we're us. not, because I'm not a nerd. You're a nerd. You're right. Sorry, just one nerd. Just one nerd and his cool friend. <laughs> and his cool friend. Signing out. That's Wizard. That was Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, gang. See you next week.